Hi everyone, today I would like to present my solution to the problem of an object jumping from object to object. This is a really difficult problem to solve in Scratch. Here is my solution. I'll show you first what I did and I'll explain how I did it. This is the cat figure that I like to work with. And as you can see, it can jump between those blocks. It can jump backwards. Uh, it falls when there is no jumping. There you go. It can walk in the air. It's going to do it real good. Okay, so this is how I did it. The first block deals with um, motion from right to left and changing costumes. So we first start in a certain position, this location, this is the first command, and we initiate it with the first costume, uh, which is this cat. Okay, so this is the, uh, the, the default, uh, the default uh, character from scratch. That's the second one, so the cat appears like it's walking. I duplicated these two using this command, the flip horizontal, see? Uh, so I, I made a copy and I duplicated it. And the next most important thing that I did, I give it red shoes like this. Um, it's not very pretty, I could have made it nicer. Um, they also don't have to be red, they can be black and they can completely overlap this line. Um, and then they wouldn't, you wouldn't see them at all, I just wanted it to be red for clarity. Um, when I say they can be black, I mean not exactly black, but some shade of black, so it will be distinguishable from um, the black of the cat itself and the black of the uh, of the of these uh, blocks. Uh, these were created very easily, uh, just like this. So I made one and I duplicated it, and then I spread them across the screen. I can um, I can change their location if I want. It's very easy. Let's go back to the code. Um, yeah. So I created four costumes, two that change when you go right and two that change that go left. Um, this is explained in this part, so we initiate it as costume one. Um, if, let's look at this part for a second. If the costume is one, then switch it to costume two and set, let, and, and keep in the variable costume that we're in two. Okay, um, and if we're not in costume one, that's what this variable is for, uh, then switch it to costume one and set the variable in one. So, so this is how we get this, uh, this motion. Okay, so, so there is a variable that keeps uh, the number of costume we're in, and if it's one, it changes from between one and two. I'll, I'll go back to the, to the jumping part. Um, and then there is a wait here between the costumes, otherwise it's just going to be too fast and we won't be able to see it. And changing x by 5, this is how we're moving right. Uh, and the same exact thing goes with left motion, except here we're dealing with costumes 3 and 4. Why is there if jumping 0 here? This is so um, it will not be able to walk during the jump. Okay, so if I'll, if I'll take this part of the code out, uh, the cat will be walking through the jump, which I did not think was very nice. See how it walks through the jump? I wonder if I can do control V. Yeah, it worked. Okay, and I like to comment all my code um, like this. So this deals with the left and right motion, which I'm sure most of you know. Uh, this part of the code deals with the jumping part. That part. That part. Okay. If um, up arrow is pressed, then repeat by 20, change y by 5, so go up by, by small steps of 5, 20 times. This is how we get this smooth jump. And change jumping variable by 1. See this jumping variable? It changes as we go up. You can think of it as height. It's not really height, but it tells me that I'm in a jump, and it tells me where I am. Am I going up or down? The second part of the if... Again, the same exact idea as before. Now, this part is responsible to bringing me down both the y and the jumping by, uh, by, by minus 1, the variable, so that I know that when jumping is 0, I'm not jumping at the moment. Okay? Um, this 
the rest of the end clause here is that I can on is to prevent double jump in the air. Um, only if red, remember my red socks are touching black, which can be um, either the ground or the black of the uh, object surface, then I can jump. If I'm going to take it out, then double jumps are possible. Okay. Okay. Um, because it's N, double end, it doesn't get into anything. Okay, double jump. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed, but you could assume the double jumps. Again, let me just get the code back. Okay, so this part is responsible to the jump. The rest of the code here is what's making the really interesting part happen. And there is a series of four each that makes sure that um, it would work um, very nicely. So there is a forever loop here. The first condition is that we want the red socks to touch the black and uh, jumping to be above zero, which means I'm I'm either in the jump or I'm I'm in the air, I'm in motion. Okay. Um, if this happens, sets uh, increase y by seven. Okay, why is this happening? Because that deals with a case where I'm see I'm jumping now. And I'm landing on an object that is higher um, than um, so this case is because it's double it's touching the this this clause. Let me let me move it a little bit higher. I'll explain in a second um, how we deal with those things. Um, yeah, if I landed on an object that is um, that is uh, the, the the object that is taller than me, so the jumping is is over zero so i didn't get back to the same height as i was before but red is touching black so i landed okay in this case set increase y by seven as in put me on top of this object seven is a number that i figure out by trial and error and it's gonna make me go on top and not get me stuck in the middle kind of like this okay now it's gonna stop the second if i'm not touching black and i'm not and i haven't landed okay it means that i'm in that i'm in the air that i'm that i'm like here okay that just it just happened the part that uh it's like falling off okay red are no longer touching the surface and i'm not jumping which means that i'm falling this part is the gravity part that makes sure that i will fall and it will re decrease y by minus 2 until I will hit the ground, which is the y position that I started with, minus 115. Um, or red will touch black, which means I landed on some surface, because I can also fall from surface to surface. Or if I will touch um, uh, purple, which uh, which I only added because those things... I'm not supposed to touch purple, right? I mean, it's... but but as you everybody knows Scratch, Sometimes it goes between objects, kind of like this, right? So uh, if this happens um, and I'm touching the, the purple, still make me go down just because my head touches. Uh, I don't want to hang. See, I don't want to hang in this block just because my head is touching the purple. Um, so in this case, keeps keep pulling me down, which is, which is ha what ha is happening right now. It keeps pushing me down. But because my body is touching, it's the first condition, then it's pushing me a little bit up. So I'm kind of stuck between these two conditions. And the solution is either playing with either number or just move that block a little bit up. Because it is a little annoying. So like this. I had it here before, but I, I, the jumps were a little challenging, so I moved it back. But, but it created this annoying situation. Let's continue. Uh, the next condition, if red is touching purple, which is again not supposed to be, but again this is scratch, sometimes my red socks are somehow touching the internal surface that is purple. Now I don't have to have it purple, if it would have been black there would be no problem, but I kept it purple. Um, uh, again increase y by 4, because that tells me that my jump was incomplete. You see what just happened, how it elevated me? Let's try again. See? 
trying to create this partial jump. You may you may see it because there, see it touches the the purple, uh, but then it still kind of let it go up. Uh, that's that's what this part is for. There, ugh, it's kind of hard to create it, but th those are extreme situations that that happen and needs to be tackled. The last condition um, is uh, yeah to cover cases when the cat's head is touching a block, but the legs are in the air, so it's kind of hanging in the air. See like this. If I wouldn't have that part, let me show you what happens. Uh, it may get. Okay. Yeah, that stuff happens. See, it it kind of walks in the air like this. Now it's kind of hanging. The, the the falling is very slow. Ah, the falling is very slow. So I, we can create a situation where it's there. It's hanging by the head. Okay, that's not supposed to be. And it's not falling because uh because this this condition is not being satisfied. Um, and and if I'll remove this touch uh, purple the other problems will will be created so i'm gonna put this here this tells me hey i'm both touching the purple but my legs do not touch any surface which means i'm hanging by part of my body so so activate gravity and if you notice it, it kind of felt slower here my, i put minus one here and minus two for gravity uh, again just because trial and error showed me that this is um, the, the better way of doing it so that's my code. That's my solution. Um, uh, it is, as, as you've seen, it is uh, not, may have slight glitches such as here. You can see this double jump. Uh, it's because of the situation I described. Also, if you want to arrange your blocks, if you arrange your blocks too tightly, um, then um, the cat will be trapped between them and will jump up and down like, like we've seen before. So just spread your blocks. Um, um, yeah, but that's, I think this is the nicest solution. The tiniest glitches of double block, like this, this, this double, tiny double jump can be easily fixed if we're reducing this to six, um, then it, it's, it will not go up as much. Um, yeah, see? Um, anyway, um, I hope you like it. Uh, it took me several days to resolve it. So I know it was a big deal and none of the solutions that I've seen online were satisfactory. So I hope you liked it. That's the code.